Um, and I think an integral part of the destruction of these jo jobs has been part of the labor union movement. Uh, they have not been vociferous enough in protecting union members. Uh, they've sold them out. And, you know, that's the most despicable part of all because in this process, especially in the automotive and uh, accompanying industries, they've been ravaged. I, I don't have to tell everybody they know. And uh, But it, it's been uh, the final blow that has been used to bring America to its knees and uh, essentially uh, turn it into a third world country because that's where it's headed. And uh, it, it, there's nothing there to stop them except the next election. And uh, if we don't clean these people out and reverse uh, these Patriot Acts and and the Federal Reserve, get rid of it, and and to get rid of campaign contributions and executive orders and lobbying and many other things, then uh, we're doomed. Well, I won't argue with you at all, Bob. You're absolutely right. The thing is that the American people have to understand what is happening is not happening by accident. Barack Obama is not trying to you know, get more jobs for America. He can't tell the American people that. He's got to talk about jobs, jobs, jobs. And he's creating jobs in China and India and, and Mexico and Italy, but he's not creating jobs here in America. And until the American people understand that Barack Obama is simply a front man for the power elite, the Brotherhood of Darkness, the uh, the, the group who really has a different world agenda. None of these things make sense. Well, our telephone number is one triple eight two four liberty, one triple eight two four liberty or four six four eight two nine five. And so, the, uh, if you're watching and seeing what's happened to the unemployment figures, why, why, my goodness, you know, there's some jobs being created, but they're not being created in the private sector. They're being created in the government sector by government spending. And, of course, certainly the, uh, the, have these various programs. We're going to uh, actually uh, pay uh, some employers money to uh, pay higher wages and better health benefits to those who are already, already working. But what about those who aren't working? I mean, you would think they'd be concerned about them. Well, we're going to simply uh, give them, you know, continued unemployment benefits. But what happens when the unemployment benefits run out? And suddenly we're finding that all across America, why people continue losing their jobs, the local governments, county governments, state governments are having massive layoffs because they don't have the money. Federal government could just print the money, but the everybody else can't print the money, and so we uh, we find the government is laying off people, uh, and the housing industry is laying off people, the agriculture industry is laying off people, the lumber industry is laying off people, and down the line, whether it be mining or certainly it's all layoff after layoff after layoff. This whole idea of green energy and, and solar power will lose two jobs for every one job it's created. That's what it did in Spain. And drive the cost of electricity up to the point where more factories will have to leave America. And nobody is telling the American people it's all designed to do exactly what it's doing. Well, Bob, how are we? You know, you would, you would wonder that people would wonder. And although I, I must say too that the mainline media doesn't touch it, uh, they avoid it, uh, they don't talk about it, and uh, so uh, there is that link that's missing for them. And I guess they don't have enough time to. Uh, uh, listen to talk radio or get on the internet 
And, of course, the Internet, I think, is so powerful, and there's so much information there that they won't carry uh, on regular news. So I, I suppose there's a, there's a good reason why. But And I, I guess maybe people don't realize uh, that we're on the brink of what we're on the brink of, which is uh, some vast destruction. Uh, that has been going on and continues to go on and will go on unless we stop it. Uh, we are making inroads, there's absolutely no question. And we do have the this brotherhood of darkness uh, off balance, if not on the run. Uh, but uh, they're moving fast. And uh, things are going to come to a head over the next two years. Well, Bob, what do you hear about the war with Iran? Sydney, I, I, I get a lot of information from a lot of sources. It, it's all varied. You, know, you endeavor to what to believe. Everybody has an opinion. What do your sources tell you about the imminence of a war with Iran? Are we talking about a year and a half? Are we talking about a year? Are we talking about six months? Are we talking about a, a few weeks? What do you think? Well, I don't think it's a few weeks, and uh, it could be a, a few months, but I don't think so. I, I think they they might try to time this thing with the next election, and the reason being that uh, um, they know they're going to get hurt very, very badly in the next election, and um, because they're going to have to repay everybody over and over again uh, to try to get them to do their bidding. And um, uh, that has them off balance because they know that we are capable of doing the things I just talked about, doing away with some of their coveted advances in uh, controlling Americans. And uh, so, you know... Uh, I think timing-wise, two things could happen. This business of an invasion of Iran, and uh, secondly also, uh, the, um, the disruption of the financial system by having a meeting uh, which would bring together all the countries for devaluation and default settlement. The only thing is, I don't think that they have the timing in place yet. And I think they're going to ha have to suffer uh, a terrible defeat this November when the Americans go to vote and kick all these people out. And uh, and uh, I don't think they, they have that luxury here. Uh, if I was them, that's what I'd go for. Uh, in fact, even a... Uh, temporary, uh, supposedly, uh, cancellation of elections. Well, yeah. They know where they're going to head. Well, yeah, I would so, think that. Uh, but I don't think so. I think it's going to happen next year. All right. Well, I, I hope you're right, uh, Cindy, but it just seems it would be what an ideal way to get the people behind uh, the government would be to have a war, Cindy. Uh, George, George Bush, his popularity was really pretty low by 2003, and then with the invasion of Iraq, it, it went up again. A war is a great way to uh, get to be a popular president. People don't understand that, but... That's the way things are. You rally behind the administration to support our brave, fighting, courageous men. If you really believe in them, bring them home. Well, our telephone number, one triple eight two four liberty one triple eight two four liberty or 464 got a question for our special guest this evening, Bob Chapman. What's happening to the housing market? What's happening to the employment market? <clears throat> well, housing uh, continues to uh, deteriorate. Um, at the bottom, uh, they provided um, a number of loans, but not nearly enough uh, to be able to uh, uh, to make any uh, meaningful dent in the problem. Uh, the majority of the help has gone to Wall Street, all the financial institutions, 
and so on. And so they they have been uh, probably deliberately unsuccessful in solving that problem. I noticed that, um, and I mentioned this on the program before, I've noticed the FDIC uh, is trying to sell some of the assets which they've confiscated uh, in uh, taking down banks. And um, this process, of course, will go on. But they desperately need funds. And these kinds of sales of assets that they've had to take over is going to disrupt several markets. 